Well, good evening. Wonky Astronomer here. Well, a few months ago, I built this observatory in my backyard. And uh, the big advantage of this is it allows me to leave my telescope and all the equipment set up, ready to go at any time. But what's actually inside? Let's go and take a look. Welcome to the Wonky Observatory. First thing I'll do is I'll just open the shutter a little bit to let in some more light. Now uh, almost everything in the observatory is automated, computer controlled, except one. It's this shutter. I do have to open that manually. I won't open it all the way because it's running a little bit. Now of course the main feature of the observatory is the telescope. This is a Celestron CPC 1100 HD, so it's an 11 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope on an altazimuth mount. I also have a hyperstar on it, which means that the camera is on the front and at the back I just have a counterweight. Usually you would put a camera here, but with the hyperstar it's on the front. So I'll just show you that. I'll have to take off the, uh, the view shield. This big black thing is just to shield it from. Uh, dew collecting on the front lens. So now we can see the camera which is mounted here. Um, having it on the front like this gives it a focal ratio of f2 which is um, very good for wide field and it gives you a very fast photographic system. This is a black and white video camera, very sensitive it feeds a signal down to a, uh, a video capture device. This video capture device converts the video to digital. It goes through a USB hub and then across to the computer. As you can see, there's a lot of cables. It's, it's organized chaos here with all these cables, but uh, I, I know what they all do, I think. The main thing I use this telescope for is timing asteroid occultations. That's when a, an asteroid moves in front of a star and hides it briefly. And uh, the important thing in observing these occultations is to time it accurately. So we need to know the exact time that the star disappears and the exact time that it reappears. And so to do that, we use a GPS device. So we're not so much using it for location like you would with a normal GPS but we're using it to get a very accurate time because the atomic clocks on the GPS satellites are very accurate. So we can use this to add a timestamp to the video. On the back of the telescope, we have the counterweight for the uh, hyperstar because of course that puts a lot of uh, weight on the front. So you need this counterweight to balance that. And this is a motorized focuser. Again, this is computer controlled. This is the motor that drives the dome. I can uh, operate it manually, like this. Rotate it in both directions. But it's also controlled from the computer by this USB interface. The computer itself is over here. It's just a little uh, mini PC over there. And I've got a monitor mounted beside it. When I'm using the telescope, I have several uh, pieces of software running here. I don't have them all running at the moment, but I do have the uh, telescope control here. I can uh, press these, these buttons to move the telescope. So when I press that, I can also move the dome by clicking here. The dome will move. So normally when I'm using the telescope, it will, of course, track the movement of the stars. It will move across the sky as the stars move. And of course, as it does that, the dome needs to rotate to always have the open shutter in front of the telescope. And so that's all controlled by the computer. The computer will 
command the dome to move when it needs to, to keep up with the telescope. Although I can sit here and operate the observatory from this computer, I usually stay inside and connect to this computer from my computer inside and operate everything remotely because it's much more comfortable sitting in the house, especially on a cold night. And so because I'm not in the dome, it's convenient to have this camera, which is a wireless security camera. And this allows me to keep an eye on the telescope. It has infrared lights, so I can uh, see it even in the dark. It's a good idea to keep an eye on the telescope because if it turns in the wrong direction, or it turns too far in one direction, it'll really tangle up these wires. See, I've got a wire coming across here from the wall of the observatory to the telescope. And uh, so if the telescope moves too far, it'll pull on this and, you know, it could be a disaster. The observatory is built on a concrete slab. And an important thing with any observatory is to isolate the telescope from vibrations that may come up from the, uh, from the floor. So for example, if I'm walking around on the floor in the observatory, it can cause vibrations in the slab and that is uh, transmitted to the telescope. What many people do is build a pier with a completely separate foundation. So it's not touching the uh, concrete slab of the floor at all. What I did instead was I left three holes in the slab and I filled those with sand and gravel and I put a paving stone on top and then the legs of the tripod sit on that paving stone. So that stone is not touching the concrete slab at all, so it isolates it from vibrations. And it seems to work pretty well. Now I'm just going to close the shutter because it is raining outside and starting to drip water. Look at this. I'm going to close that. As you may know, Australia's been having a very bad bushfire season for the last couple of months. And some of the fires have been uh, fairly close to us. And we've had uh, a lot of smoke in the area. It's been difficult to do much astronomy. And we also get this uh, brown powder, I guess it's ash, falling from the sky and it covers everything. It's on my car and it's all over any, uh, any flat surface. And uh, you can see it here, it collects in this, in this groove in the dome here. See that brown stuff? Mounted on the side of the observatory, I have an all sky camera. This is just a camera that points straight up and I can use that to monitor the clouds. So particularly when I'm uh, inside in the house and um, using the telescope remotely, I want to keep an eye on the, on the sky to see if it gets cloudy because, you know, if it clouds over suddenly, it could also start raining suddenly and uh, then my telescope would get wet. So I can keep an eye on the clouds with this camera and uh, if it looks like rain, I can, I can come out quickly and uh, close it up. Well, there you have it. The Wonky Observatory. Well, good evening. Wonky Astronomer here. Well, good evening. Wonky Astronomer here. Looks like I picked the wrong day to film a dog-free observatory tour.